Today on TFL Bike, we are talking about a motorcycle manufacturer that we have not had a chance to cover before. Yeah, we even haven't even had a chance to ride a Royal Enfield before, at least I haven't. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So we've been doing these roundup videos where we go through kind of every bike that a certain manufacturer makes. And we did some digging. Apparently you guys are Royal Enfield fans because that's one of the most searched for brands on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and these are actually really cool bikes for a lot of reasons that we'll get into, but primarily because they're very affordable. These are generally not expensive machines to buy brand new, which is cool. Yeah, you'll see, they're pretty basic. They've got a basic lineup, they've got pretty basic motorcycles, they've even got a basic website, so um, it's pretty easy. I mean, if you're just getting into motorcycling and you know you wanna pick up one of these, it's not overwhelming to go to their website and figure out for yourself all what they offer, whereas you know you go to like Honda's website and you could spend three full days on it oh, just digging yeah. through spec sheets. So yeah, we're gonna walk you through this today and see what this brand is all about, and hopefully we'll be able to actually ride some of these when the weather turns nice in the spring. Absolutely. So let's start off where their website starts off, which is with the Scram 411. Now you might guess from the name that it's 411c seats, single overhead cam thumper, uh, it is fuel injected, and as you could guess from the other half of the name Scram, it's a scrambler. 24 horsepower, 24, or just under 24 foot pounds of torque with a five speed transmission. I think a Scrambler is a really cool bike, and I, I love that even as small as the Royal Enfield lineup is, they offer a Scrambler, because um, we saw this when we had that Ducati Scrambler as a long-term review bike. They look great, you get comments on them everywhere, yeah. they're capable, you can take them on fire roads and stuff, um, and they're still great street bikes. Yeah. So. It's generally not going to be anything like a dirt bike, they're going to be heavier, more street oriented, but especially for us here in Colorado, we have a lot of gravel roads. We also have a lot of gravel on our paved roads. So having a scrambler with a slightly knobby tire is nice to have. And you get a little bit more suspension travel. You get a comfortable uh, rider position. So it's just a nice all around bike to commute on. And something that makes it really great for someone as a potential first bike is that the price on this is $5,100. So it's not a ton of money to get into a brand new motorcycle. And it's a cool looking bike. A lot of beginner bikes aren't necessarily all that cool looking. These, these have this very badass retro styling to them. They look unique. Doesn't really look like any other bike on the market. It has a very market. utilitarian look to it, I think. It's, I don't know, it's like boxy and big and macho, but um, obviously not a monstrous engine. So it has that big beefy look, but it's yeah. not a big beefy motorcycle. Um, and you can see that from the displacement and the weight of it. Yeah, and there's seven different colors that you can get them in. And every one of those color options is pretty cool. I have I'd... to say that's probably my favorite part about this brand, Royal Enfield, is how many color options they offer on all their different bikes. Yeah. Um, all the other manufacturers, like most of their bikes are two, maybe three colorways. Yeah. And usually one of those two or three colorways is just like all black or it's the brand's color, like Honda is all red or Kawasaki is all green. And with Royal Enfield, you can really change it up, and all these bikes just look totally different depending on what color scheme you go with. Yeah, and again, it's crazy. Not one of these seven color options looks bad. No, They're I all, think they all look good. I, mean, I have a clear like favorite in here. Yeah? That one. Yeah, the red and white? Yeah. I kind of like some of the uh, some of like the gray and blue. I like yeah, that that's one. that's cool. But if we go a little further, I think that one's probably yeah. my favorite. Yeah, like you said, I mean, you can't go wrong They're with either really of them. They're really all pretty good. And they also have these little lines of color on half of the wheels, yeah. which is pretty cool, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which that... Yeah, the fender changes colors, too, yeah. so a lot of detail. Yeah, yeah. so... Like I said, that's that's one of the coolest parts. You'll see you'll see that as we go through the list. All their bikes are like that. Uh, let's move on to the next bike in their lineup, which is the Classic 350, which is basically a, a classic cruiser, right? Yeah, so another entry-level bike, especially at $4,700, not especially expensive, slightly smaller displacement than the, than the Scram. So it's 349cc single cylinder, air-cooled motor, 20 horsepower, about 19 pound-feet of torque. 
Uh, this bike is also a five speed. The bike also weighs about 430 pounds, so it's not especially heavy. Also, the Scram 411 that we were just talking about weighs about 408 pounds without fuel. Um, so both of these are pretty lightweight bikes and this classic, like in the name, it's just got very classic old school British styling. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, you can see what it's modeled after right there. You've got the new one on the left and this really old school classic Royal Enfield on the right and clearly they're taking their design cues from an older bike. I, I love that Royal Enfield is doing this. Um, you know, the, just looking at like some of the details in the engine cases, they look like old motorcycles. Yeah, and they really not. do. Um, and in a lot of ways, they are very old school, but there's a few killer things that they have on these bikes from the factory, uh, an especially important detail being ABS. So the Scram 411 came with ABS. This bike comes with ABS as well, although these smaller Royal Enfields do have single brake discs in the front. So, you know, not a dual disc. I mean, you're probably not going to have tons of braking power. But like we said, they are also lightweight bikes. Um, and having ABS is really nice to have, even on an entry-level bike, especially for someone that's looking to get into motorcycles. It's huge. I think ABS should be on every street bike. Um, I know there's differing opinions on that, but especially for a new rider, there's no reason to not have ABS. The argument is that, you know, you have better lever feel and you can really push the bike for further without ABS. But if you're an entry-level rider or really any rider on the street, you, you don't want to do that anyway. So, uh, yeah, I like that they come with ABS. And just like before, a, a dirt simple entry-level motorcycle with everything you need, nothing you don't, um, and very affordable. You're looking at forty. $600 starting MSRP for one of these. Yeah, yeah, so it's inexpensive, cool, kind of, I mean, just like the Scram. It's it's a very approachable entry bike. Yeah, and uh, I'm not usually a cruiser guy, but if you're going to get a cruiser, I mean, why not have it be an old school, like actually retro cruiser yeah. like this? And just like before, you know, the look of these things totally changes depending on what you go with. So you can, you know, spec it out to be a very military style. Yeah, uh, that bike. with a slightly knobby tire would, yeah, look, would look awesome, especially in the sand color too. Yeah. Um, I really like the chrome tanks that they do yeah. that just screams retro. And just like before, there are just tons of different combinations cool. you can go with. Yeah, the what is that? Hal Gray, Hal I don't know. Someone don't know tell us how, how to that. pronounce yeah. that. Um, Super cool. But yeah, just rad that they have so many different styles. They look like completely different bikes, and yeah. they're not. So yeah, it's it's amazing how much those color schemes can change the feel of a bike. And yeah. Now we'll move on to the Himalayan. So this brings us back to that 411 cc single cylinder that we saw in the Scram. Um, once again, just over 24 horsepower, just under 24 pound-feet of torque, also fuel-injected. Um, this bike weighs about 440 pounds. Um, it is a slightly bigger bike, so it's a little bit heavier than the other two that we've looked at so far, but nice four-gallon fuel tank, which is good for an off-road bike that you want to take long distance. Uh, what's the seat height like? Seat height is 31 and a half inches, so not crazy high for an adventure bike. I mean, this is a smaller displacement adventure bike, yeah. so you wouldn't expect it to be anything completely crazy. 17-inch uh, wheel in the rear, 21-inch in the front, so again, as exactly what you would expect on a true adventure bike. There's also something cool called Tripper Navigation, which is um, kind of in conjunction with Google Maps and the Royal Enfield app, but there's a little display on uh, basically next to the speedometer of the bike, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find a great picture of it on here. There you go, there's a picture of it. So there's this little digital display here, um, and you can basically program on your phone your, your route, and it will give you navigation right there. Um, a lot of bikes are doing this, but I think it's just integrated really well. You have all these round dials and it still looks retro, even though you have a modern, colorful digital display there with all your navigation. Yeah. And for 5,300 bucks, that's a pretty nice feature to have. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of bikes for 5,300 bucks that just have speedometers and odometers yeah. and they're LCD. So exactly. yeah, that's a, a very nice feature. Nice looking instruments for that amount of money. And I just love the look of this bike. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's cool. It, the The crash bars on the side of the tank are really cool. I love the side panel in yeah. the triangle of the middle of the frame. 
I mean, that's that's very old school having that that triangle with a cover over the top of it, and uh, that one just has a utilitarian flat cool look to it. Um, same thing. I mean, the engine block with the Royal R, uh, everything about it. It's it's a cool looking bike. It's kind of also cool to see the double stacked fenders yep. and the fork gaiters. Yeah, it's it's a nice mix of being retro, being slightly modern, not trying to do too much of either. Um, I don't think this bike is missing any identity trying to split no, that difference. Not at all. I mean, this is a class of bike that really interests me. Um, neither one of us sitting here are expert off-road riders. So, you know, you get on like a 1200cc adventure bike and we just feel yeah. limited by on the size On a steep downhill, $20,000, yeah. <laughs> 550 pounds. Exactly. Something like this, bike. way more affordable, way more lightweight. Yeah, if you drop it, engine. whatever, you just buy another. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. And um, so many of the adventure bikes out there look the same. They have that beak nose, and they yeah. they just they look too sporty. This is the only one that looks like this, at least that I can think of off the top of my head. Something and, uh, about retro styling on an off-roader that just works. It's, it's pure. Seemed, it You're just out in nature, like with no technology, yeah. the way it was supposed to be back in the old days. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. Even even with cars and all the way to motorcycles, yeah, old school styling on an off-roader is just a, a cool thing to look at. Yeah, let's. Uh, we've been on this trend of looking at the different colors, so why not do the same here? Yeah, um, that's cool. So you got, you know, your basic black and silvers. You have not a, big on the camo. I think that's pretty cool. I don't you, think I'd buy it, but that, I, yeah. I, I think it's cool. I like the lake blue. The lake blue is cool that's with the split blue and white yep. tank. I think the rock red's a good look too. Yeah. I'm with you on the lake blue. I think lake blue or the camo that Case hates is, uh, <laughs> is the good look on this bike. Should we move on to the Meteor? Let's do it. All right. So these bikes range from about uh, $4,650 to $4,800. Um, and once again, 349cc uh, single, so kind of like the classic 350, although the styling on this bike is not quite as retro as the classic. Looks a little bit more modern. Once again, 20 horsepower and round about 20 pound-feet of torque and a five-speed transmission. Um, pretty simple running gear overall, 41 millimeter fork. Uh, it does have preload adjustable twin shocks on the rear, so you get at least a little bit of extra technology there in being able to adjust your preload. It weighs about 421 pounds with 90% of its fuel. They're, the way that they classify how much their oh, bikes so weigh weird. is kind of weird. Yeah, it's like... With 90% of the fuel. Yeah. And like most of them are like curb weight without fuel. So or full having fuel. Oil, yeah. Or 90% fuel. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. They can't make their minds up. <laughs> no. Um, I like the instrumentation on all these bikes, really. I mean, it's just super yeah. classic looking. You also get the tripper navigation on this bike. Um, and I... I just think the way the needle kind of sits behind, like there's this round the LCD, yeah. center LCD portion and the needle kind of comes out from behind that on all yeah. these models. And I think it looks so cool. Yeah, that's a good looking piece. And then it's um, it's got a four gallon tank. Oh, we thought this was actually very <laughs> <Yeah>. funny. So <laughs> these bikes are so basic that the so, highlights. Yeah, you go to this screen where it says highlights and number one highlight, mirrors. <laughs> Number two highlight, headlight. <laughs> number three, a tank. Number four, a seat. And number five, a taillight. All things that you would expect on most modern motorcycles, uh, but it is kind of funny to see them highlight it. Uh, the other thing that I thought was funny is that even the spec sheet for this bike is old school. So it lists all of these different specs for the bike. And at one point in the spec sheet, it says electrical system, 12 volt DC. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. So it's not six volt. It's not six volt. It's 12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty funny. Um, again. I mean, but that that is true to these bikes. And it, once again, I mean, this is a more expensive paint option. 4,800 bucks is a very affordable, very good looking bike. And not only does it look retro, it kind of is, but but you still get ABS. Still so, get ABS and, you know, like, they're fuel injected, nice they're yeah. they're modern, they're, you know. It's it, modern in the way that matters yeah. and old school in a way that's fun. Modern in terms of lighting and fuel injection and, you know, safety and all that. And then completely retro in terms of, like you said, fun yeah. factor, looks, style, all that. Yeah, which I, I love. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you're looking at 
like none of these bikes are rocking inverted forks. You're not rocking any crazy suspension or brakes or no what. lean sensitive traction control or anything right. like that. Which, to be perfectly honest, for me especially because I love retro bikes, is a breath of fresh air. Yeah, you know what's I love also that this just exists. It's an option. What's great about it too is that these are most of these at least are entry level motorcycles, and they're simple enough that someone who doesn't have a whole lot of mechanical experience can oh, start tearing them learn. apart and learning how to work on stuff in their garage. Which, if you're gonna start riding motorcycles, you should learn how to do at least the basic maintenance. Yeah. Not saying everyone needs to do their own valve adjustments and all that, but you yeah. should be tightening your own chain and. You know, doing some Oil basic, changes. doing basic maintenance. Yeah. Don't go to the dealer for everything. So yeah. this is a great platform to learn all that stuff on. Now, next up, we have a bike that takes us a step up. So the last couple bikes we looked at were 350s and 411s. Now we get into the INT 650, or as Alex calls it, the INT. Yeah, it's the INT 650. Yeah, we're looking at a 648cc parallel twin, 47 horsepower, and 38 pound-feet of torque. And as is our favorite, it's a 270 degree twin, kind of like you get in some Triumphs. So it has the same firing order as a 90 degree V twin. So it gives that parallel twin a little bit more character in the way that it runs, a nicer rumble. Um, this is what starts to pique my interest because you've got a little bit more motor for people that have been riding longer, a little bit of extra torque, a little bit of extra fun when you twist the throttle. Yeah, I agree. Um, out of all the bikes we've looked at so far, the only one I'd actually consider buying is the Himalayan. I like I like the yeah. idea of low displacement in an, in an adventure sure. bike. Um, to anyone who's been riding for a while and you know you want to jump into Royal Enfield, this is probably the first model you're yeah. gonna look at. I mean, thinking about cruising around town on a bike like this would be a ton of fun. But it, once again, I mean, we stepped up in displacement by a good margin. We're still looking at pricing between $6,000 and $6,700, depending on what paint color you get. Also, a step up in having a six-speed transmission. Um, and then we've got a 320-millimeter front brake disc, 240 mil rear, um, and Bybre brakes, Bosch ABS. So we're stepping into some nicer components that come along with that bigger engine. Still 41-millimeter forks and twin rear shocks. These ones on the Int have remote reservoirs and also some preload adjustment. Yeah, it's nice you've got some adjustability. I also just love the look of a, yeah. a remote reservoir hanging off the back, especially on twin shocks. They yeah. just, it, it looks so sick. It does. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, you're jumping up in displacement. This is now a real, not that the other ones aren't real motorcycles, but this has got real power that can get you on longer trips on the highway, yeah. um, take you on those longer rides. And it's still under seven, you know, 6000 to $6,700, depending on the paint scheme you go with. It's a cool bike for $6,700. Yeah, bucks. and the reason is... It's still dirt simple. You've got yeah. a bigger engine, but you don't have any crazy electronics like a lot of the other bikes. Um, and there are very few bikes I see on a manufacturer's website where I look at it and go, you know what? That bike is perfect the way it is. I wouldn't change a thing. That's one of them right yeah. there. That exhaust, that tail section, the fender that hangs off the yeah, back. I don't there's think nothing I about that. It. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. about that Maybe that make I would it a change. little bit louder than it comes from the factory. Yeah, but as, as far as looks goes, oh, yeah. like normally a stock exhaust, I'm like, that's got to go. Tear the that fender, out of there. tear that off. The turn signals, change those out. There's not a single thing on no. that motorcycle. Yeah, that even change. the tail light, the fenders, the license plate mount, it doesn't have that ridiculous extension mm -hmm. coming off of the uh, rear fender that... Yeah, I mean, I, it's just a great looking bike the way it comes. And something else that's kind of cool is that even though this is a step up in size from the other bikes, it weighs 445 pounds, they say, without fuel. So it's not an incredibly heavy bike. No, I mean, what did you say, 440 without, without fuel? So add, I don't know, what, 20 pounds to that? Sure, yeah. It's, it's not it's, it's not a it's, lightweight motorcycle. No, but my first for a 650. weighs 560 pounds. Yeah, I mean you're not gonna so, you're not gonna feel like you're riding a, a giant slouch. No, it's, it's it's not a tank. Anything under 500 pounds, at least in my eyes, feels very manageable. Yeah. Um, oh, once yeah. again, colors, colors, just like all the other bikes. The chrome is cool. The chrome is probably going to be the winner. Um, I do like these. That's cool. Yeah, too. these kind of old ones, old school ones cool. with the red and gold on the bottom. Once again, the gray and the turquoise. I just, I love that turquoise. Look at that seat too. That was a different. That's a different seat than we saw in the pictures before. Yeah, because it doesn't have that bit of white 
piping. So that yeah. might be part of the reason too that uh, well, it's like a I diamond think, pattern instead of a uh, the other one on so horizontal. If lines. you go back to the Chrome Tank, so that bike is uh, sixty seven hundred bucks. This is the most expensive. Is that seat different? They look mostly the same. Maybe the one in the picture was an accessory seat. Like, see, that's got white piping and yeah. horizontal lines. Yeah, so that might be an accessory seat because if you scroll up to this blue one right there, that that's also that's the diamond quilted. Here's both the of them. So oh, the yeah. you can see the diamond quilted like solid on the sides, diamond on the top, and this the ribs wrap yeah. all the way around. So that looks They're like a slightly taller seat. Too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah one of those has got to be an, an accessory. Anyway, um, yeah, like you said, I think the teal and, and gray is pretty cool. Yeah. That's very old school, um, very kind of 70s, uh, having the sort of metallic tank in the chrome fender. Um, yeah, but Classic red. Chrome's the one to go with. Yeah, the chrome, the chrome is cool. Probably hard to keep clean. Not often that we like chrome. Yeah. But it's something about a British bike, a more cafe racer style bike. It just works. Yeah, it totally does. And then arguably, maybe... Maybe the coolest one that they have. This is the more cafe racer styled Continental GT. Starts at $6,200. Um, oh, man. This is a good looking bike. So once again, 648cc parallel twin. Um, same specs, 47 horsepower, 38 pound-feet of torque, six speed. Um, it's got a three and a half gallon tank, 445 pounds, no fuel. Uh, 18 inch wheels, 130 width rear, 100 width front. Uh, but aside from the running gear, it's just the styling on this You've got this that makes it really yeah, cool. Yeah, you have this really long, squarish, boxy tank um, that looks like old six bikes from the 60s. You have this, like, cafe racer-style seat with a yeah, hump on yeah, the back. Yeah, the hump on the back, twin uh, twin shocks with remote reservoirs, Once these again, exhausts yeah. that kind of fire up at a 45-degree angle, spoked wheels. Everything about it just it looks very classic. style. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I, I mean, we've been talking about style this whole video. That's the key to Royal Enfield. Is yeah. You see them riding up next to you on the road and you look over and you're you like, wow. That's cool. That's a cool motorcycle. I don't see those all the time. Yeah. What are they? Is that a retro bike? Like they, they just have this thing to them that you don't get with most of the other brands. Yeah, they have a wow factor, which I think is also especially important with a bike for somebody that's trying to get into motorcycles. Because if you don't walk up to whatever bike you have and think, wow, I love this machine. I really want to spend time on this bike and get used to riding motorcycles. If you don't have that draw, then what's more likely to happen for you is, is something that I've seen with a number of people where they buy a motorcycle, they think that they want to get into riding it, and then they just don't end up doing that often. They never get past that point where you're uncomfortable riding a motorcycle on a street surrounded by cars, which is fair, especially when you're starting out and you're not yeah. used to that. And then you get to that point where, Ugh, I really don't ride this. I should sell it. Yeah. And then this beautiful chrome bike is sitting in your garage under a layer of dust. And that's what happens to a lot of yeah. them, unfortunately. I think it's less likely to happen with something like this that you walk up to and it's just so magnetic and it pulls you in. It makes you want to ride it because I mean, look at it. Yeah. It's and, awesome. Who wouldn't want to ride that? Part of like you, you will have other people come up to you with one of these. And that's, oh, yeah. that's part of what's going to get a new rider hooked on motorcycling is they go and buy a brand new bike for $5,000 or whatever it is. And they're filling it up at a gas station and someone comes and asks them questions about it and they get involved with the community. So yeah, the community is one of the funnest parts of it. And you know, there's, there's a lot of very practical, functional bikes that we like a lot. Things like the Ninja 400, um, bikes like the MT-07, uh, bikes that are great, but they're not necessarily stand out in terms of style. It yeah. looks like a lot of other modern motorcycles. This just satisfies a totally different demographic. Uh, and I think one that has a lot of value, one, one that's important. This is a bike that doesn't look like most brand new motorcycles, but it is brand new. So you get that classic motorcycle feel, you know, like 60s movies, t-shirt, you mm -hmm. know, cool guy on a motorcycle, right? 
you get that style with this without having to actually own a classic motorcycle, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah, you know that first thing. <laughs> yeah. Oil yeah. leaks, dead batteries, clogged carbs, being carbureted. I mean, yours at is all. just a frame right now. It doesn't even have a motor in it. One of, so. one of my bikes doesn't have a motor yeah. in it. Yeah, so you, you get all the cool style and none of and the headache. Exactly. And then you can learn how to wrench on a modern motorcycle yeah. at the same awesome. time. Even I'm, this Top Dog Continental GT starts at $6,200 and ends right around $7,000. And of course, you can add some accessories and price them out a little more. Yeah. Um, but $7,000 for a motorcycle manufacturer's highest end model. <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Yeah, because think about some of the other lists that we've done looking at like uh, Kawasaki H2s. Yeah. Some of the crazy like Panigales. Yeah, you know, some of the BMW baggers. And yeah. I mean, it gets nuts. You can easily spend $30,000, $40,000. Go to Ducati. You can spend way more than that on a motorcycle. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the top dog most expensive color of the most expensive bike that you can get from Enfield is less expensive than some manufacturers' cheapest motorcycles. Yes, very true. Very, so, very true. It's cool. There's yeah, a place so for it. I love it. Let us know your thoughts on this brand down in the comments below. Um, like we said at the start of this video, we've seen these on the road. We've seen them around town. I've been to a Royal Enfield dealership. I've never actually ridden one. Um, and even when you do see them, it's, it's yeah. rare. I see like, I don't know, a hundred Hondas for every one of these I'll see on the road. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, to be fully transparent, uh, we, we have interest in these Royal Enfield bikes. We haven't formed a relationship with Royal Enfield yet. So part of our hope in covering these bikes, like with this video, for example, mm -hmm. is to reach out to them and say, uh, you know, next time we're on the West coast, which is where most of the motorcycle press fleets are. We would love to throw a leg over one or more of these bikes and start making some videos actually riding them because at the end of the day, that's what we really want to do. Yeah. It's fun to talk about them, but we, we would ride rather them. ride them. We also like to hear from you guys, though. So once in a while, if you guys own cool bikes and you want to bring them in and do a Dude, I Love My Ride on your own motorcycle, and we'd love to have your you. Bikes. So yeah, if, <laughs> if you have a Royal Enfield and you want to put it on YouTube, bring it uh, over. talk about it, bring it over, or any other cool motorcycle for that matter, yeah. get in touch with us and uh, we'll be sure to get you, get you in a video on the channel. Yeah, you can shoot us an email at ask at TFL truck or even drop a comment under the video or any video and we'll make sure to get back to you because we can never have too many bikes to film. Exactly, there you go. So uh, I'm gonna keep dreaming about these because I didn't realize how cool they were before we started recording this video and hopefully we can get some seat time on them. Thanks for watching, check out alltfl.com so you don't miss any other stories in the bike world and we'll catch you in the next video.